Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book Bounce, a creation by Matthew Syed. Bounce, 2011 by Matthew Syed delves into the sources of extraordinary accomplishments in various domains, such as sports, mathematics, and music. The author contends that it is diligent training, rather than innate talent, that ultimately shapes our success. Furthermore, he suggests that those who credit exceptional performances solely to inherent gifts are likely to overlook their own potential for achievement, thereby neglecting the practice necessary for success. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Matthew Syed, an acclaimed sports journalist, contributes columns to The Times and serves as a commentator for BBC Sports. Additionally, he was the top-ranked English table tennis player for nearly a decade and competed in two Olympic Games. With eight key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book on storyplane.net. To start, the text wants to discuss what sets winners apart from the rest of us. The text discusses the concept of talent and challenges the notion that it is the sole factor in achieving high performance. It explores the science behind attaining high performance and explains why figures like Mozart were not as exceptional as commonly believed. Additionally, it highlights the influence of trivial factors, like sharing a birthday with a successful individual in motivating success. The text also addresses the phenomenon of choking under pressure despite being prepared and provides strategies for avoiding it. Key idea number one, the text suggests that putting in 10,000 hours of training is more beneficial for success than relying solely on natural abilities. Mozart is often seen as the greatest composer, but his achievements were not solely due to natural talent or fate. Child prodigies like Mozart had to practice for thousands of hours before showcasing their talent. A study of young violinists showed that the only factor directly linked to achievement was the amount of practice, with the best performers having practiced for an average of 10,000 hours. It appears that outstanding abilities stem from rigorous practice rather than innate talent. Key idea number two. To master new skills, one should continue to challenge themselves and learn from their failures. Most people tend to stop practicing and improving once they reach a certain level of skill. However, top performers constantly strive to challenge themselves and improve beyond their current abilities. To do this, it is important to accept failure as a learning opportunity and use it to identify areas for improvement. By striving for skills that are out of reach and learning from failures, one can continue to grow and transform their abilities. Key idea number three, intensive practice can reshape the brain to become more efficient and effective. Table tennis player Desmond Douglas, although having slow reaction times in general, was able to react quickly in the game due to intensive practice. Through years of experience, his brain had learned to quickly extract relevant information from the game, giving him more time to react. Additionally, experts use different parts of the brain than novices, allowing them to automate actions and focus on other aspects of the game. Thus, practice can change the way the brain functions. Key idea number four, belief in innate talent as the sole determinant of success leads to a lack of motivation to strive for greatness. The text discusses the concept of a fixed mindset and its detrimental effects. It explains that a fixed mindset is when someone believes that success is determined by unchangeable traits, like genetics. This mindset can be harmful because it discourages effort and improvement. Individuals with a fixed mindset may give up easily or become complacent if they believe they lack talent or if they believe they are naturally gifted. The text uses examples of a marathon runner and a table tennis player to illustrate these points. It concludes that children should be praised for their commitment and effort rather than their innate abilities to prevent the development of a fixed mindset. Key idea number five, even small things can ignite a strong desire to achieve success. 
South Korean golfer Se Ri Pak's success in the LPGA Championship in 1998 led to an increase in South Koreans joining the LPGA Tour. This is because people are motivated by association, finding inspiration and confidence when they can identify with successful individuals. A study showed that even a random similarity, such as a matching birthday, increased motivation and perseverance in completing tasks. Trivial incidents like insults or seemingly meaningless assignments can also ignite motivation. One example is Mia Hamm, a professional football player who was motivated by her coach telling her to mentally switch on her motivation. Key idea number six. Believing in your ability to win a competition is crucial for giving your best performance. Athletes use conviction to convince themselves they will win, even after a string of defeats. Doubts can hinder performance by causing nervousness, muscle tension, distractions and forgetfulness. The mindset of an athlete greatly influences their physical state, similar to the placebo effect. Conviction improves concentration, calmness under stress and motor control. Choking under pressure is a common problem that needs to be addressed. Key idea number seven. Under pressure, our brains prompt us to act cautiously and intentionally to avoid failure. The brain has two systems, explicit and implicit. The explicit system is slow and used when consciously controlling movements, while the implicit system allows for quick, automatic tasks. Under pressure, people may revert to the explicit system and monitor every movement. This can cause people to behave strangely when doing important tasks due to fear of failure. For example, walking slowly and carefully while holding a glass of wine over an expensive carpet. Key idea number eight. One way to avoid choking under pressure is to convince yourself that the event is not important. Choking is a phenomenon where top athletes underperform in high pressure situations despite being well prepared. This occurs because the brain transfers control of tasks to the explicit brain system under pressure, limiting the ability to perform complex tasks simultaneously. To avoid choking, athletes need to convince themselves that the competition is irrelevant and reduce pressure. By putting things in perspective and focusing on what is more important, they can use their implicit brain system and perform better. Top athletes must practice as if their sport is important, but downplay its importance during high-stakes situations. In conclusion, the main message of this book is that success is not determined by genes, but by deliberate and relentless practice. By constantly challenging oneself, the brain can be transformed to better process tasks. It is important to have a positive attitude and trust that practice will lead to mastery while also learning from failures. The book suggests praising children for their effort rather than their talent and putting things into perspective to avoid feeling overwhelmed. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on storyplanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories and knowledge await you there. See you soon on storyplanet.net.